Hi everybody, welcome to Leon's Chainsaw Parts and Repair. We are looking at Jay's Steel 031 AV. You guys have seen this before. I've got a couple videos I didn't upload of it. Uh, one of them I was up on the Firewood Hill and cut with it for mm, probably a good 20 minutes in some, you know, mostly seasoned madrone. And I mean, this was throwing chips. It was cutting exactly the way I'd want it to. Uh, I initially got it back from him saying, uh, Jay indicated that uh, it would start, run okay, but when he would tilt forward, I mean a cut, it would die out. Like, Alright, crank seals. So I put those in, taking it up to test, and thought I had it. All of a sudden it started running super erratic, leaning out, and no amount of adjustment on the carburetor would, uh, would bring it back. So I wasn't quite sure what had happened, but when I got back home, and wasn't quite as pissed off. I got into the thing and uh, get these little covers. It was pretty obvious right away what had happened. Uh, let me get this air filter off so that you guys can see. This is a unique one. There are two barbs on this carburetor. One is for the uh, impulse from the engine, and that's just a uh, that's a no-brainer. The minute you install the carburetor, it's indexing into that impulse hose. The other bowl, barb is the fuel, of course. And that's right here, tucked under on the back of the carburetor. I'm going to make sure... All right, you can see the barb on the bottom right there. That's the impulse. In the upper left part of the screen, you can see the fuel hose diving back on the left-hand side. That, again, is the fuel hose, and the barb is at basically the angle that you see the hose right there. So, when I got home, I let this thing sit for a while and immediately noticed a puddle of gas under it. So I just assumed something had gone wrong in the, uh, the inlet needle and was taking it apart to get to that. Well, I don't know what happened, but the barb itself fatigued and broke. Let me see if I can find a Tillotson carburetor. you got to be kidding me. Well, it's close enough to this. This is an older Walbro. It's got a much bigger uh, nipple on that barb. But anyway, the other one on that still had broken off right here. I, I don't know what kind of metal fatigue causes that, but it had cracked and was almost completely separated, which certainly explained the erratic tuning and inability to richen it up. Uh, so I took a barb off of one of my Tillotsons from one of these home lights, and naturally it's not exactly right. It's so very close, but it's just a little bit small. So I epoxied the hell out of it into here. Uh, cheapest carburetor I could find out there for one of these 031s that used one was over 35 bucks by the time you counted for shipping. So I thought it was worth giving this a try first, trying and save Jay a few bucks. And worst case, if it happens again, we know exactly what's going on. But anyway, that whole thing is dealt with. The other issue that uh, Jay noted when he got it back was that it leaked oil. And he said he'd get a pretty good puddle after it sat in one spot for a couple days. So I got everything apart and I'm not going to uh, get into this one again if I don't have to, but the long story short this is one of those saws where the bar studs capture the inner plate and that inner plate had warped just a little bit so oil was running back behind the plate and filling a pocket back here, a couple pockets and then slowly running back out and over a couple of days you could get a stain you know a puddle of oil about like that it's not that much when you measure it but when you measure it on the floor it's, it's a mess so anyway I'm going to go ahead and test run this get it going to where the chain gets wet with oil shut it off and we'll see how much oil comes out overnight if it's not much Jay this thing can be ready to rock and roll and I will be getting a hold of you to get it back to you but 
put this cover back on and we'll give it that test fire and see where we're at. nice and wet. I was getting a red sling off which is good because that's the color oil I use. So I'm gonna let that saw sit there and see what kind of a puddle's underneath it tomorrow and hopefully Jay will be giving you a call to set up a time to pick this thing up.